Good afternoon. Um, what I want to review with you today is the workflow that we most recently discussed on our last call. So first things first, we are going to look at the workflow that goes from sales to manufacturing to fulfillment. The way we're going to do this is I have a few products in the system that I'm going to be working with. Inventory to product. See this is the final product, the Axis A20. In order to produce this product, you'll see I need to go in here and have a bill of materials. Just to demonstrate the flow, we'll see that the only, I'm just keeping it very simple for the demo. Uh, we're going to produce one floor. And within that floor product, we we'll go back here to the floor. Oops. You'll see within the floor, we, in order to produce this floor, we have a bill of materials where we have two sheets that need to be glued together. So the flow will look like this. Sale order gets confirmed. Two manufacturing orders get created. The first one will be for the floor in which we glue the two sheets, two sheets together. You can imagine that there may be 10 items that are comparable to the floor where we have to do some gluing of various sheets in order to provide a raw material in order to produce that final product. So essentially, um, we're just going to use the floor today as just to keep it simple to demonstrate the flow. So we'll glue these two sheets together, we'll create the floor, and then we'll see that the floor is becomes uh, available so that we can finalize the production of the final product. Now, let's, uh, let's go and do this. So sales, oh, before I go to that, let's look at manufacturing. We'll see there are no MO orders right now to do. So we go to sales. We'll create a quote. Just like this, John Doe, sell one of these, just like that, confirm the sale, a whole bunch of stuff happened now. Now we have the delivery order was created as well as the two manufacturing orders. Go to manufacturing, operations, there's our two orders, first one up is the floor, second one up is the axes. So we'll see here there are two different routings, one's glue, one is just a test routing. We'll go ahead and we'll create the floor first. We'll check our availability to make sure we have these two sheets available. When we do, we can plan our order. You'll see it generates the work orders up here automatically. And at that point in our dashboard, whoever's responsible for the glue will see that they have one to launch. They'll open this in their tablet. They'll click this with their finger. And at that point, here's the interface. They'll click start working. And when this happens, the time tracking will be done in real time. And they can either click it done, pause, block the uh, activity, scrap, or suggest maintenance requests on equipment, etc. What they'll also do is assign lot numbers to the products in which they're consuming so that they can have full traceability and that you can manage inventory accordingly per lot number per product. Now, at that point, we'll also want to specify actually and create a new lot for the floor that we're creating here. Save that. And when they're done, they click done. And we go back to the, oops, operation. We'll see the floor is in progress, but one out of one our work orders are complete. We can mark this as done. When we mark it as done, you'll see that right now this floor is in red. It means it's not available. When we actually, when the floor gets marked as done and it consumes the two sheets, it moves the inventory, uh, you'll see here that this is confirmed and it's no longer in red, which means that we can officially plan it because it's in stock. There's three work orders that need to be handled through for here. So we'll see here on our dashboard, work order one is ready to launch. Just like that, it can start working. And now we'll specify the serial number for our final product that we're creating. And save it. That point mark is done. Again, works. now we have one in the glue, which is the second one in the sequence. For 16, start working, mark is done, and lastly, finish here, open, start working. It'll ask us to specify the lot. We'll specify 15, which is the one we just created on the last MO for the floor. Save it, mark is done. At that point, this MO is here. It states in progress, three out of three work orders complete. I can mark this as done. It'll generate here, I'll see all the work orders associated with this production. You can see all inventory moves associated with this production. 
see a cost analysis associated with this production of the raw materials and the actual hourly costs broken out for us to see what the unit cost was for this Axis A20. Not a whole lot of data here because I didn't configure it completely, but you can see that the architecture is there to take that on. And you'll see the up-down traceability. See all the raw materials. It was created in ML14. ML14 came from the floor, and the floor was consumed here. And we can see the two sheets and see where those sheets came from. So you have total downstream traceability in terms of uh, where everything came from and the lot numbers associated, the time it came in and out of the warehouse, and then, of course, the stock moves associated with each product as it moved through this uh, through this workflow to create our final product up here, 000016, just like that. Okay, um, at that point now, you will see here, uh, just give me one second. We will see here, um, we had a sale order, oops, a sale order, which is responsible for this, uh, sale order Number four is what we just confirmed four minutes ago. You'll see there'll be a delivery order also in our inventory app. Ready to go, open it up, source documents, set order number four. You can see the status is marked as available automatically so those folks in the warehouse know when manufacturing orders are complete and marked as done, it will automatically recognize which particular delivery order this product corresponds to and mark that delivery order as status equals available so that uh, your inventory staff can fulfill that order. You'll see it'll ask us to specify here the, the serial number, 16, it automatically recognizes that this was um, make to order for this, pro for this uh, order. Assign it to the delivery order, and when I validate it, it will move it from the stock to the end location of the customer. And you'll see it'll add a layer on that traceability here. So now it warehouse out, it came from MO14, MO14 produced the floor, there we are, drill it all the way down. So that's essentially how the sale through manufacturing process is going to work from a very high level. Um, please let me know if you'd like me to drill any deeper into that workflow. Um, if there's anything I forgot or if anything I didn't address completely for you, um, just let me know. I'll be happy to create you guys another video, okay? Thanks so much and looking forward to your response.